At the age of 23, Stephanie Smith has graduated from college with a music performance degree, landed a recording contract with Goatee Records, released her first CD, Not Afraid, and she's encouraged thousands of teenage girls through her involvement with Pure Freedom, a national sexual purity ministry in the United States. This is her first book, I like that, first book, Crossroads, The Teenage Girl's Guide to Emotional Wounds. Stephanie, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me. From? All the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> and you are a girl who is living her dream. That's right, I really am. And I, I don't take that for granted, it's such a blessing. I should, should probably say the dream of who knows right. how many other young girls. But I know you're quick to admit that you're not living a charmed life. It's been a rough road. It has at times, yes. But I, maybe I'm a diehard optimist, but the, the beauty of that is that I've known so many different sides of my Lord. Um, when I've been broken, He's restored. And when I've been joyful, I know that all good things come from the Father of Lights. So I can rejoice in, in the blessings too. So it's it's been this interesting dance with him um, from an early age. He just, in the absence of an earthly father, he stepped in and I, there was no shortage of a fatherly love in my life mm -hmm. from my heavenly father. You're going to be singing a very moving song about your father. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Sure. The song basically documents my the first two times that I met my father first at age 14 and second at age 19 um, and it's a love song to him you know I write it and and God has used that song and this story but really the song says daddy I, I love you and more than that I forgive you because both encounters I left very much wounded uh, the first he just in the uh, chaos of meeting his children for the first time and and it really was unexpected he called me by the wrong name and at 14 it was hard for me to understand that what it said to me was you haven't thought about me as much as I've thought about you you know um so how I walked, old were you when he left six months old and why did he leave? my mom actually left him um because things were really unhealthy uh my dad suffers from paranoid schizophrenia and they were just diagnosing and discovering this and there was a lot of aggression and it really wasn't a safe or healthy environment. So she left, not for a divorce, but just to get some perspective, to step away from the mess that had become the household. And she went to her mom's house and sometimes when you step away, you realize just how unhealthy things are. Mm, and especially with little children. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I was six months old and my brother was uh, a year and a half. So we're only a year apart. So she had two babies and um, quickly realized that if this marriage was going to be salvaged, it needed some counseling, it needed some work, and um, they couldn't, my dad couldn't agree to that, and so it wasn't safe for her to go back. You dedicate this book, Crossroads, mm -hmm. The Teenage Girl's Guide to Emotional Wounds. To my father, I love you, mm -hmm. Stephanie. Your mom, you say, gave you a gift, and. Sure. I was very touched by this. My mom is a God-fearing woman, and she raised me and taught me by example to trust the Lord as provider, to trust Him as Father, to take Him at His word. And one thing His word says is to speak blessings and not curses. And that's why I dedicated that book to my father, too, because as I share this story, it's not to bash him. It's not to dishonor him. I love him. And I share it because it's my story, and he plays a part in it. But I love that man, I really do. Just in the couple times I've met him, I, I see myself in him and I, I see that he still has purpose and value. And my mom taught me that in growing up, she never painted him as any kind of a monster. He wasn't somebody that I feared, which actually added to the anticipation of meeting him and then the crushed um, emotions that I felt when, when it didn't go as I had hoped. But You have the stories of other young people mm -hmm in this book, a real variety, uh, which will touch teenagers in, I think, all the places That's that they need <laughs> some identification. But I love that you say, your life doesn't have to be defined by the hard parts. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had lots of those hard parts. Yeah, the, the beauty, I think, in um, putting on 
uh, as best of a lens of Jesus that we can is, um, you know, what do we do when bad things happen to us? And, you know, as I've pondered and thought about being 14 and my dad calling me the wrong name, that was just a wound. And we walk through life and sometimes we don't do anything to provoke it and wounds occur. And then what? You know, are we left to just go, oh, my life's ruined? Or if something bad happened to us, do we say, well, that changes the course of my life and I'm just a statistic and slap that name tag on? But the beauty of, of the grace of our Lord is that we can own it and say, yep, that's part of my story, but I don't have to be defined by it. And at the end of each story, you give this challenge, choose your playlist. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Of course, um, it kind of, ha the whole book has a little bit of a music theme um, and the chapters... iPods all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> the chapters um, go with the song titles on the record. But choose your playlist means um, the choice is yours. The steps from here on out, um, the choice is yours. With everything that happens to us, we have a choice how to react. We can be a bitter person or we can choose to walk through the storm and come out a better person. And this, of course, is just what your mom modeled. She did. She could have been... Bitter. She could have. Spewing put downs. And, and she just kept taking the high road. That's what choosing. the world tells us that you're entitled to be angry. You're entitled, you know, we're teaching our youth. It's okay to be ticked off at your parents, you know, and and the the scriptures are telling us that to the extent that we forgive, we'll be forgiven. That's tough. Especially when you go, I didn't do anything, it just happened to me. Um, that's where our God, you know, there are times where I felt like the Lord stepped in and He said, my heart is breaking with yours. This isn't my desire to see you broken like this. But you have a choice right now where you can carry these heartaches into your future, your dreams, your marriage, or you can lay it at my cross and walk in the freedom of forgiveness that I offer. Stephanie, you attended your first uh, sexual purity retreat at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a sweet irony, a full circle thing. It is. That you come around to, have, have you got the pearl? I do, I have the pearl on. It always turns around, but. And this was see. from? This is from when I was first 13. Retreat. And I still can wear it. Can you see with the camera? Can you get it's into that It's a real pearl. pearl. What's the significance <laughs> of it? This pearl, it symbolizes the pearl of great price. And um, for this lesson, it was on purity, but um, it's the beauty of, the story where a father had given his daughter some dress up clothes and some fake pearls and the, the paint chipped off and but they were her favorite part of the dress up and he knew that and one day as she was getting older he asked for the pearls and she she cried and said but you know they're my favorite and he said do you trust me and once she finally released in faith that her daddy was good and and he knew they were her favorite and he wouldn't ask if if he didn't have something planned or better he replaced it with a set of real pearls for her and so the symbolism is, you know, will we wait for God's best? Do we trust that the way that he's ordained it, the way that he's set it up because it was his plan in the first place, do we trust that it's the best and we'll release our ideas of good or our ideas of perfect to him because even if there's a period of waiting or faith where we release that to him, he'll replace it with the best, the pearl of great price. You are his treasure. Mm. And you are single? I am. Still? Yeah. I don't have girl. a problem with it right now. I'm pretty living the dream, if you will. And one thing I am learning is that it's going to be an added um, hurdle just doing the road and, and having a relationship. Mm. Um, but I trust him. You know, he's preparing somebody who can do that lifestyle and I can travel and do what I love as well and it can work. Well, from Acquire the Fire here in Canada to you've just finished a tour with Toby, Toby Mac. Toby Mac, yep. Reliant K, um, going to cities and arenas. You know, one special thing about this Toby Mac tour is he was my favorite growing up, DC Talk, and my hometown for my 15th birthday, they were supposed to come and play in this arena in my hometown, and they canceled, and I was devastated. It was a hard year. Um, <laughs> and the first date of this tour was in that same arena, and I was sharing the stage with Toby Mac. So, very well, we're special. We're just so happy for you. and. Having read the book and heard these songs, and they really, it's a companion set. Mm -hmm. and by the way, Stephanie is a girl, in case you hadn't noticed, <laughs> dot com. <laughs> Stephanie is a girl dot com uh, to find out more about Stephanie and her touring and her, her music and her message in this book. Um, I'm excited that you're reaching teenage girls. Thank you. Because you're going right to the heart of their issues. Mm. And right now you're going to sing that song that we talked about. Do you see your dad? 
I don't. Um, we've met several times since the 14, 19. Um, but he provides for me in ways that he can, and he knows his limitations. And one thing I've learned by the grace of God is to love him, the man he is right now, with the, the grief, the guilt, the heartache that he bears. Um, it's hard for me not to want him to be the daddy that I always desired, um, but to love him in his limitations and his brokenness right here. Um, I kind of keep my distance because I know that he has a hard time with some of the emotional things. So It's a real growing up journey, isn't it? It really is. Yeah.